All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So in this era of censorship, we are going to talk about Budesonite today as well, which may be another thing that YouTube doesn't like at some point. So let's start. The discussion today we are going to do is about a study from UK, which is about the use of Budesonide in outdoor patient. As you know, Budesonide is one of the steroid inhalers that is used in many of the respiratory chronic respiratory condition patients. We had Dr. Richard Bartlett as well, who talked about it as well. Although it was interesting that his site and his other information was taken down. Yeah. Don't know if that was intentional or was he censored. Here is a study that actually agrees with his observation and the way he was managing the patients. So let's look at that study and the results. The short of the study is that the results were good. They were good for budesonide usage within seven days of the symptoms started. So let's start. So our, uh, our gifts for humanity continue and we'll continue from here. And I am kind of uh, a little amused as well for YouTube's behavior. So that is why I'm saying that here we are going to continue. So here we are. The study is here. So this is drbean.com. This is a link to register your cool bean title. And if you can give us your email and country, then we can reach out to you when we are planning to do a, a tour. And then here is the, the clinical trial from UK that we are talking about. This is the trial published in the Lancet. Hopefully that would allow YouTube to stay quiet for some time. This is a couple of more links that are going to be used as I discuss the study. So let's look at it. The author said that they wondered when they were treating patients, so they are doctors, when they are treating patients, they wondered where are the patients of chronic respiratory disease? So they saw in their patient's cohort that were coming to their clinics or hospitals that the patients of chronic respiratory diseases were less amongst those who were presenting with COVID. And they became very surprised because you would expect them to be actually more. They already have a chronic respiratory disease. And they found out and they thought, they postulated maybe widespread use of steroids, glucocorticoids, inhalers, were helping these patients. So that is how they postulated about this, this. And then they said, why not we do a study? Once again, if you are in a hurry, you want to go, the study had very good results and should be resulting in usage of the budesonide in the early part of the treatment. And what early part? Seven days or so. So let's look at that. So now we're going to go in the detail of the study. So this is an open label study. So that means the doctor who is giving it and the patient who is receiving it, they knew about it. It is a parallel group. So they had two groups. It is a phase two uh, study, randomized controlled trial. And the study name is stoic. I just showed you the study. What they did was the patients that they selected to uh, have in the trial, they gave them inhaled budesonide versus usual care one to one within seven days of the mild symptoms. So this is an outpatient study. So patient who is presenting with mild symptoms, they divided them in two separate groups. One group was given in addition to the usual care, the budesonide and the other group was given usual care. What they did was they studied folks by age, lesser than 40, greater than 40, uh, equal to 40, by sex, male, female, and by comorbidities, people having one comorbidity versus two comorbidities and so on. So that is how they kind of looked at those folks individually as well. What did they do? So the budesonide, what they did was they asked them to use turbohaler. Turbohaler is an uh, inhaler. Turbohaler twice daily with 800 microgram per actuation for the budesonide. That was the dosage they were giving twice daily. And then, of course, there was a control group here as well that was saying, dude, give me some budesonide as well, but they were not. Endpoints, what were they trying to observe? 
they were trying to see that will any of these outpatient patients end up in hospital or require urgent care or require emergency assessment of their situation. The secondary endpoint was self-reported clinical recovery by the patient. So they asked the patients to fill these forms that I have shown you. These forms are used mostly for the chronic uh, respiratory system patients where they fill them and that kind of creates a score to understand what is their situation. So for example, shortness of breath at rest, shortness of breath doing physical activities, uh, concerned about getting cold and so on. So there are multiple, there are two questionnaires that they had asked for. One is called CCQ and the other one is called Flow Flu Pro. So CCQ is chronic, a clinical COPD questionnaire. And the other one is for flu to try to understand if somebody is having flu symptoms. So these were the two self-reported reports that they had asked the patients. Study was stopped early because an independent review committee, board, company, they had reviewed the data and said that further continuing with the study will not change the results. The results had become pretty stable. So it was not stopped because there was some harm. It was stopped because the results became consistent. So here is what they did. And here are the results, beautiful results. 73 people in budesonide side treatment group, 73 in the usual care. Primary endpoint, in the case of the, in, the group that was intended to be treated, that was two out of 73. So 3% patients, outpatient, had to either become, had to go to emergency or ICU or not ICU, urgent care or hospitalized. In the case of the control group that was receiving usual care, so it's not that they were not receiving any treatment, they, there were 11 patients out of 73. So 15% patient ended up in the hospital. And I think that is a very similar data as well as we see that patients who become infected with COVID, about 20% of them end up in the hospital. So here, 15%. So this kind of seems correct in that from that point of view. And then only 3% in budesonide is a very, very interesting improvement. And this was significant as well. So 95% con confidence interval was 0 0.03 to 0 0.21 and P was 0 0.009. So this was a great result. Secondary endpoint. So the recovery was one day shorter. Six to nine days in the um, tre uh, treatment group, budesonide group, seven to 11 days in the control group or usual care group, eight days average here, seven days average here, 0 0.007. That probably is not too big of a change, but this change that ending up in the urgent care or hospital is a big change. We also know that those who end up in the hospital, out of them, there are three to four per hundred who would end up in ICU. And then from there, there are deaths as well. So if there is a drug that prevents someone from ending up in a hospital, it is essentially protecting them from moving towards death as well from COVID. So then there was the fever, mean days for the fever. So 2% had fever here, 6%, 8% here, P was significant as well, slightly above the significance or slightly out of 0 0.051 instead of 0 0.05 or lower. The proportion of participants that were at least one day, that had at least one day of fever was less in the treatment group. So they had less fever as well, which is a very interesting thing. Here is why, ideally, giving steroids earlier from the previous studies that have been driving my discussions, that have been driving WHO's decisions, others' decision not to use steroids early, though that study said that if you use steroids, then the clearance of coronavirus from the respiratory system becomes stalled, it becomes slow. And then that would mean that the patient may get even more infections. And on top of that, when the 
steroids are given, there is a possibility of immunosuppression, which would then allow other infections, secondary in infections like bacterial infections, to become opportunistic and, and grow. And that would cause fever. Although steroids are, um, they can suppress inflammation as well, which can reduce fever. But here, if you see here, the fever was actually low on the infected side. That means infection control was better. Antipyretic drugs needed, the drugs for, for fever, less on the treatment side, budesonide side, 27% patients needed it versus 50% patients on the usual care. That is significant as well. And the data p-value is significant as well. Symptoms on day 14th to 28th. Fewer symptoms on this side treatment side and more symptoms on the uh, usual care difference in proportion of the symptoms or the uh, uh, at 14 and 28 days 0 0.24 and p value was significant as well then this was the score that i showed you earlier ccq score the patient's own assessment of their situation with the respiration or flu pro score both were better at 14 days for budesonide so think about it now. In summary, the patient felt better. They recovered faster. Their respiration was better. They had less fever. That means less faster, rapid growth of infections. And on top of that, they stayed away from hospital and a smaller number, 3%, instead of 15%. That is actually, once again, it's a very important thing. 3% people going to hospital versus 15% going to hospital has a huge outcome because now the ones who are in the hospital, out of them, some are going to end up in ICU and some are going to die. So when the number that has gone to hospital is reduced, then the ICU usage is reduced. Usage meaning patient in ICU is reduced and their death is reduced as well. So beautiful results. I, I love this. So here we are with this discussion. I will stop here. We'll do a quick chit chat as well after this one. So please uh, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. There are three links in the description if you would like to support this work. One is to buy me coffees. That is a way to uh, support it without using PayPal. Then there is one more, which is for becoming a patron. And then there is another link to use PayPal if you wanted to support this work. Thank you very much. And I would see you in five minutes.